The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. What's your man to Hawaii to car going? Didn't they tell you how to get over to the ranch? Maybe you will, but this car won't. What do you mean? Say, Grandpa, I am afraid she's on her last wheels. Ah, that's no way to talk. Why, well, this car's like new. It's barely broke in. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with it outside of maybe a uh, new set of seat covers. <laughs> I don't know how to handle that's all. The car's like a pretty woman. You just gotta coax her enough just to get it going. <laughs> Now, come on, baby, come on, come. Yeah, see that? <laughs> Just like a baby, all she needed was a little bumping. <laughs> now, what in tarnation's the matter with you? Have you got the choke out? Of course I got the choke out. I threw it away last year. Are you having trouble with the car, Grandpa? No, I just thought it'd be fun to sit out here in the sun and get scorched. <laughs> Lift that hood, Pepina, there. Let me take a peek. Well, Bill and Wire looks like he's holding real good. <laughs> here, Pepina. So take this hammer and knock off the tops of a couple of them things. I'll go get the rest of my tools. <laughs> Where's my toolbox at? It's in the kitchen. Talk to him about the car now, Luke. I will, I will. I just don't think this is the right time. Uh, Grandpa, you think maybe I ought to call Flory and tell her you're going to be a little late? Tell her nothing. Well, she'll be wondering where you are. She's waiting on you. Well, leave her wondering, leave her wait. Who asked you to go to the dance anyhow? You did. Well, a woman getting a lucky break like that shouldn't know how to start complaining. <laughs> Burn over, you lockhead! Look at the book. Car sure has a sorry effect on his personality. <laughs> it's no use, Senor Grandpa. We've been trying for over an hour now. Yeah, maybe we better push it down to service station. Why don't we just hold services here? <laughs> don't be funny. We'll give it one more try now. Now just tap that carburetor just a teensy weensy bit. <laughs> try that. <laughs> Smooth like that. I'll be right back. Hurry, Senor Grandpa. I am getting seasick. Don't smart me. What kind of thing? Uh, Grandpa, I'd, I'd kind of like to talk to you about the car. I don't want to talk about that rusty old wreck. <laughs> Grandpa, I, I was thinking maybe we ought to trade her in. You want to trade in a jewel like that? <laughs> Are you out of your mind, boy? Grandpa, I was talking to Kate about it. Now, wait a minute. You mean Kate was talking to you? It's all as a woman that starts that kind of trouble. Now, that ain't fair, Grandpa. This is all your fault, giving her all this. Uh, snap on lights, <laughs> curtains on the windows, and ceilings over every room. <laughs> Now, I asked you, woman, what's the matter with that car? Well, now that you ask me, Grandpa, I'm going to tell you. First off, when you ride along in that back seat, them springs dig right into your back. And that, that just shows you don't know what you're talking about, because them back seats ain't got no springs. That's what you're leaning against is just pure metal. <laughs> now, look, Grandpa. Now, I don't want to hear no more from you. That car's been a McCoy long, and you haven't. We ain't a trading her in, and that's final. <laughs> What's Rory McMichael doing here? 
that I was supposed to pick you up at your house. I know, Amos, but when you didn't show up, I knew you were having trouble with your car. <laughs> well, did you look like I'm having trouble? I was just tuning her up to a fine pitch, that's all. <laughs> well, come on, let's crawl in and get going here. Oh, Amos, as long as I'm here, why don't we go in my station wagon? What's the matter? Are you ashamed to go in my car? You think it ain't good enough for your fancy California blood? Well, it's not that, Amos. It just looks like it's going to rain later. Well, so what? This car just loves rain. It's just like a fine racehorse. It's a born mother. Well, you know that top won't go up. That top will go up when it's supposed to go up. It's just like you women to hang together. I bet you put the ideas in her head to make the remarks about this car. Right, what car? are you talking about, Amos? Well, I ain't going to stand here and have you insult this car no more. And if you're going, you get in right now. Well, we're just going to get all wet. Now, look, Flory. I'm a real patient man. But if you ain't in this car by the time I count three, then I'm going by myself. One. Two. Amos, you're just being stubborn. Three. And I'll probably be half danced out by the time he gets there. <laughs> Anything wrong, Amos? Nope. Just thought I heard a teeny weeny ping in the motor, that's all. <laughs> You'd better come along with me. Looks like that rain's getting closer. Now, look, Flory, I didn't ask for no weather report, so you just get going. When you see something whizzing by you, that'll be me. <laughs> All right, Amos. Now, you heard me defending you. You do something for me. <laughs> get going. ganging up on me. Well, looks like it finally stopped raining. It sure comes sloshing down there for a while, though. Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, Flory, did you two have fun at the dance? No, Grandpa ain't home yet. He didn't. Grandpa never showed up at the dance. What happened, Flory? He... His car broke down. He still wouldn't get in the car with Flory. What? You mean he was out in all that rain? He's coming in now, Flory. I'll call you back later. Dance. Never had so much fun in all my born days. Take your partner round and round, big foot up and little foot down. Grandpa, you're soaking wet. So I am. <laughs> Must have happened when I got out of the car to help push that fella. <laughs> what fella? The fella into one of them foreign sports cars bogged down in the mud. Grandpa, Flora McMichael just called. She said you never got to that dance. She said your car broke down and she said you were stuck. Well, Flap Joy, have anything else to say? <laughs> no, but I have. Now look, Grandpa, it ain't bad enough that car always breaking down and you always losing your temper, but now it's getting so it's a menace to your health. Well, you know you could have caught pneumonia working out there in that rain. Yeah, and don't tell us it needs tuning, because it'll cost more to fix that car than it's worth. It costs money in other ways, too. It ain't only you, Grandpa. We all got to suffer with that car. The whole family. Now, you two's done a powerful lot of talking. You've spouted enough hot air to dry me off twice over. <laughs> she was right about the family. That car belongs to all of us. So it ain't for you to say or me to say whether she comes or whether she goes. It's for the whole family to decide. And we're going to take us a vote on it. Now, in a true and democratic fashion of us McCoys, we're going to take us a family vote. It's going to be honest and above board. And as to whether we keep a true and trusted friend or stick a knife in her back. <laughs> I want you to know this is going to be held fair and square. Now, I don't want to mention no names. But there ain't a girl darn thing she can do to you that I can't protect you from. <laughs> come on, come on, let's get on the vote. All right, all right. First one to vote is our friend Pepina here. <laughs> Now, here's a man that wouldn't even have a job if it weren't for me. <laughs> Put him right in the family just like he's one of them. How are you going to vote, son? 
I will probably be looking for a new job tomorrow, but they're right. We need a new car. Yeah, see, little old, hope you ain't going to be swayed by the word of this outsider. Just take the vote, Grandpa. I'm a taking it! <laughs> Next one to vote is my favorite granddaughter here, yeah, see? You're getting pretty every day of the week. <laughs> You know, it was just about time your grandpa took you down and bought your new dress, ain't it? I'm sorry, Grandpa, but I think we ought to trade it in. <laughs> All right, little bit. Might as well vote again, me too. Well, I think we ought to keep the car. Huh? <laughs> well, every time you take me to school, I don't know, the kids feel so sorry for me that they give me stuff out of their lunchbox. Uh, <laughs> All right, you beat me. You can take it down to the used car lot and trade it in, but I ain't a-going. I know what to expect all of you now. When I get too old, it won't surprise me none when you take me down and trade me into some used people lot. <laughs> Let me do all the dealing. Well, all right, Luke, but you be careful. Oh, don't worry, sugar babe. I got Grandpa's blood in me. Horse trading comes natural. <laughs> the main thing is don't appear too anxious. Let them do all the talking. Well, howdy, friends. San Fernando Harry is my name. Oh, how do? Hello. Where's the McCoys, my wife? Uh-huh. Well, are you thinking of trading her in? Well, could be. Like to get a little newer model, eh? Might be. <laughs> You've got yourself a shoot husband here, ma'am. <laughs> well, she looks like a nice, clean job. Uh, what year is she? 1930. Late 1930. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are shrewd. Trading her in when you can get top dollar for her, eh? <laughs> Friends, I'm going to be really honest with you. I've got a buyer for this car. In fact, I must deliver a 1930 model to this man today. As a matter of fact, I'm willing to take a loss on any car I got in my lot. <laughs> Friends, you really got me over a barrel. <laughs> Looks like we got here at just the right time. Now, naturally, I assume you folks want to step up in class a little bit higher, huh? Now, over here, I've got a beautiful 58 model. 58? Well, that's pretty high stepping. Well, we have some lovely 57s. Well, that's kind of out of reach, too, mister. Well, how about a 56? Just what did you folks have in mind? Well, something like a nice 38. 38? What are you folks looking for, a gun or a car? A car. <laughs> well, I think I got just what you want. Now, if you'll come right over this way. Here we are. A one-owner 48 model executive car. And I want you to notice all the extras. Space for a spare tire. Standard transmission. Even a place for radio. And a heater. He's got a heater? Right there. Hey, how about that, Kate? It's got a heater. Now, on cold nights, Grandpa won't have to take along a bucket of hot coal. Excuse us, man. Don't be making such a fuss over the car. He'll raise the price. How much you asking for that old pile of scrap iron? Well, being as I need your car so bad, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You can have her for your old car and, uh, $80. Now, I'll tell you something else. If you're not 100% satisfied, you got five days to bring it back. Must take a powerful lot of men to raise that up. A friend of your pretty little wife here can raise that top with one little finger. <laughs> uh, just pay attention. <laughs> well, how are you going to find fault with a car like that? I was interested. You see that, Henrietta? 
You gotta lay an awful lot of eggs to pay for that. <laughs> well, you girls don't know it, but you're all in debt. Hey, Grandpa? Grandpa, don't you want to take a ride in the new car? No, I ain't got time. Oh, Grandpa, it's mighty pretty. It's a 1948. You sure have gone Hollywood, ain't you? Hey, Grandpa, you just push a button and the top goes up. It's got a heater and there's a hiding place in the rear end for a spare tire. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, you'd have been proud of the deal I made. Only cost me $80 and I got a whole year to pay it off. I don't like it. it ain't got no character. All slick and shiny out there. And you mark my word, Luke, it'll turn on you. Well, now, that ain't fair, Grandpa. That car ain't done nothing to us. It ain't done nothing for us, neither. Now, look, Grandpa, why don't you just come out and sit behind the wheel and, and kind of get the feel of it? No, you all get in that car and you just speed up and down the highway like a bunch of rockin' fellas. <laughs> okay, Grandpa. Look. Who'd you sell the old car to? A uh, used car lot in town. San Fernando Harry. You seem like a fella that take good care of her. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, Grandpa. He'll take care of her. Think he put her on her shed in case of rain? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he will. You told him about throwing a blanket over the hood at night, and if it's real cold in the morning, to pour hot water in the radiator. You know, she never was herself until she had hot water in it. Yeah, yeah, I told him. You told him she didn't like to be double clutch going up a hill? You know, she was funny that way. Yeah. Uh, look, you sure you won't take a little ride with us? No, not now, Luke. Not now. I'm kind of worried about her. This is her first night away from home. I got a buyer for that bicycle. Uh, my grandson sold your car this morning. There's some things about it I think you ought to know. Oh? Uh -huh. Yeah, now, if it's a frosty morning and she don't catch the first time, why, just don't force the gas to her. Just give her a, a jigger full of apple cider. Apple cider? Your grandson sold me a car that runs on apple cider? Well, you bought a car from Luke McCoy, didn't you? McCoy. Mac oh, McCoy. Oh, yes, that car. It's not here anymore. I sold it. Yeah, I knew that had happened. Some smart young fella come along and snapped it up. <laughs> Who'd you sell it to? Valley Junkyard. You sold it to a junkyard? Where's it at? No use going down there, friend. By this time, you wouldn't find enough pieces to make an ashtray. Radiator cap. Yeah, it must have fell off when they towed her away. Still warm. Why are you getting hungry? We ain't gonna eat until Grandpa gets home. Well, they like him to just go off like this without saying nothing. Well, Grandpa. Well, where you been? You done that. I hope you're all proud of yourselves. What are you talking about? They shipped her off to a junkyard. She never had a chance. That's all that's left of her. You know what I think? No sé cómo se sienten ustedes, pero yo me siento como un gran sinvergüenza. What does that mean? Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like one big hill.
come in? Grandpa, we uh, want to talk to you. We didn't know they was going to send it to a junkyard. Honest, Grandpa. It's all right. No hard feelings. What's done is done. Car's gone. And just have to get along without it. It's all. Ain't the first thing I ever lost. Probably won't be the last. It's the way life is. Grandpa, Flora McMichael is on the phone. She wants to know if you're going to take her to the movies tonight. Oh, tell her no, Hess. Oh, well, Grandpa, why don't you go? It'd do you good to get out. Yeah, you'll feel better. Well, maybe you're right that. Better than moping around. Tell her I'll pick her up at six. You know, a new car. Come on, Grandpa. You gonna pick up Flora? You better get started. I'm coming. Woo! Have a good time, Grandpa. Sure. We went down to the junkyard. They hadn't bested her up yet. Yeah, we're going to take the new car back in the morning. Well, it's good to see you, you ugly old critter. Amos! I meant the car. <laughs> now remember, nobody ever tell Grandpa that the junkyard didn't think the car was worth busting up. <laughs> Turn over, you lop-eared bucket of bolts, or this time I'll get rid of you for good. 